Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club, where every week we take a look at a different story arc and host a discussion around that. And this week we are looking at oh, and have read uh, Humbug by 451 Media uh, from 2015. And as always, I am joined by my co hosts here on the screen. Uh, we have Phil from the YouTube channel Comics Game in the Figures. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> we have Shane uh, from Dawn of Comics on YouTube. Merry Herdmas. Hey, oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Merry Herdmas. And we have Scott from Scott Shelf on YouTube, too. Nadole Clowen. Nadole Clowen. For those that Welsh, don't know what that is, do you want to tell them what it is? <laughs> it's Merry Christmas in Welsh. Yeah. I haven't just talked gibberish. <laughs> it's not Klingon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Right, so uh, how are we, folks? Are we all good? Feeling good, man. Yeah, two more days, two more sleeps till the big man comes. So is this, is this, the, is this the Christmas Eve Eve? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> okay, let's meet. Uh, let's meet who we've got in the uh, the chat here. Who's making up a herd? Uh, we've got our friend uh, Tom from uh, this month in movie saying evening all. Let the nerding commence. We've got Liam Cartwright joining us. Hello, all. Hello to you, Liam. Good evening, friend. Uh, and I think that's all we've got in here at the moment. It's going to be a slow one, I think, today. Coming up to Christmas now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, and rightly so as well. Oh, we've got mm. somebody here as well. We've got Zoe in here, a long time lurker, <laughs> first time commenter, loving these shows, and hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Oh, oh thanks, thank Zoe. You. Hello. Bless you. Welcome. And we have the noob here saying, Hello. Evening Peeps. Oh, we've just had a bunch of people dropping in. Oh, my old friend Greg. How are you doing, Greg? Hi, Greg. We've got Amy in here, bringing the Welsh as well. Bow, I, think, it... I think Bow means friends. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Merry Christmas all. She's literally translated it. No, oh, it's not. Merry Christmas all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And we have Beth here as well. Good evening to you, Beth. Hey, everyone. Hello. And we've got our friend Lee from the Retro Cave as well. Nice. How are you, Hello, Lee? Hope you're well this evening, mate. It's ladies okay. night tonight. A lot of yeah. ladies in the chat. Everyone's just rolled in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for uh, thank you all for joining us. That's uh, brilliant to see you all here. They've all so, come to listen to Scott. Yeah, it's the Welsh tones, isn't it? It's that. It's Phil's, it's it's Phil's beard. That's what it is. And it's fluffy hat. Look how lovely that is. I've got my own boring like flat hat. This looks like he looks like he bought his from like that's Tesco's finest. That is. Yeah, I, I, I would say. Santa. <laughs> Robbed it. Very small. I could knock it off of some kid. <laughs> so it's just your ego, mate. Your head's massive. Easier to nick than kids, isn't it? <laughs> Before we start, then, folks, uh, I just want to say that if you are listening via one of the podcast networks and you want to come and catch one of the live shows that we uh, we do, uh, it'll be on a Wednesday Wednesday evening here in uh, UK time. But if you click the link in the description. Uh, it will take you to all the information that you need or check us out on Instagram at the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. And as we said last week, at the end of this video, you are going to be able to choose uh, the next story arc that we read. It's going to be your choice. Uh, We're going to do that every five weeks. So uh, it will be your turn to choose next week's book. And we will select at random. We'll put it all on a wheel at the end. We'll spin it around and whoever wins you have the chance to come and join us on screen if you want to. We can do that one of two ways. If you don't want to come on with the face, if you're not that confident, we can just do... Uh, that's the wrong button. Meet you. We, we can just do this if you just want to come on and, uh, and, and have your voice. Or you can come on screen as well. It's up to you. But you don't have to if you don't want to. But if we do select your story up to read, you will win a little something as well. Ooh. That's not good enough. I want more ooh. 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 <laughs> That's can, we, can we ban Tottenham Gaming though? Because... <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's here, isn't he? Says, I know yeah, what I'm good. voting for. I think we all know what you're voting for. <laughs> oh, my brother hates me so much. <laughs> <laughs> right then, folks, let's just get into this. Let's just knuckle down on it. Uh, as I said, this is Humbug uh, from 451 Media. This was Shane's pick. And uh, this was published in 2015. Uh, I think it's my turn to do the synopsis. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> if you want it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Phil doesn't want it, so you can take 
Um, okay, so the synopsis for this is, I think this kind of picks up after A Christmas Carol, where we see Scrooge um, with his newfound love for people and the world uh, starts the House of Humbug, um, which is a paranormal investigation um, team to kind of tackle the ghosts. Obviously, we know he was visited by them in Christmas Carol. So he's now kind of got this team together to kind of go hunting ghosts in a kind of Ghostbuster fashion, I kind of yeah. feel. Um, and he eventually uh, it leads him to kind of uh, tackling Jacob Marley. Uh, Jacob's not there to warn him anymore. Jacob's be kind of can be his a- uh, adversary. Um, and there's a big showdown with that. I think that's pretty much the synopsis for it. Yeah. 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 You You're looking it. at me with blank faces like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, then. I think uh, to start us off, then, um, uh, it's going to be you, Scott, I think. Is it? All right. I think so, mate. I think it's, it's you this time. Okay. Where do I start? Overall, oh. Philip hated the book. I know that. <laughs> you can just tell by the look of him. Anyway, overall, I had a good time. I'm an open-minded guy, and I like uh, the fact that it's... No, no offence, Phil. Um, I like the fact that it's taken the... Christmas Carol story and is just taking little little aspects from it and put it into a brand new story where Scrooge is basically a ghost hunter and he is like a paranormal investigator and I think it's just great. I mean the opening the opening part in issue one was just brilliant. The fact that he kind of posed as this um, grieving woman, um, you know, big like black veil over her head. And oh, uh, you know, was you know what? Let's show people. I've, I've, I had to get a screen grab of that. You know, the first Good. time we meet him, what Scott's talking about here is this, folks. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. So, so yeah. So he's he's dressed up as his woman, and he tries to um, he tries to <clears throat> what's the word? He's just trying to out a psychic, pretty much, and a clairvoyant, yeah. and um, and uh, it's it's all about like there's a person called Harry. And then he ends up uh, talking, actually meaning a dog called Harry. But the, the clairvoyant was supposed to know this, and he was outed like that. And I think, yeah. like, just, just turning that page, I remember my reaction, turning that page and just seeing, all of a sudden, a man's face with these boobs. <laughs> massive chest. <laughs> um, massive, massive chest. And it was just like, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, right. I think I know what kind of book I'm getting myself into now. And um, it was just, I just had fun with it. Um, like uh, art, art all the way through. I loved it so much. The colors were so good. Like they were quite dull colors, but in the, in the kind of scenarios and stuff they were in. Told See, I, 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 ne- I never found the colors dull at all. No, no, no. So like, you know, yeah. Like, the notes but, I made here were how, Bright and vivid. Yeah, those but like colors they're, were. You but they're not. They they're not. They weren't bright colors. You know what I mean. But they were done There's, colorfully. Like you've got like you, your your purples and your dark greens and your and your um you know then you've got the f- like fire sort of colors as well and yeah it was just all. It's like there's very there's very few actual colors used. They've used yeah. little. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. What you get? It's like a, the color was probably the best thing in the book. Was the colors. Like mm-hmm. it looked quite wintry and kind of nice and clean and yeah. stuff, but yeah, just very few actual colors were used, maybe three or four per page. For for me personally, um, because we always start with the art, really, don't we? Um, I found the art style pretty good on this. Like, I don't really have a lot of complaints about the art, and the art was done by somebody called Cosmo White. Um, you'll see the information of the writer and the artist going across the bottom there. Um, and I didn't have problem. There was a kind of I won't say like minimum detail. Uh, but this is an, an excessively detailed book when it comes to the, I think, the inking and the drawing. But the heroes of this book for me are the colorists through and through. 100%. They're the heroes of this. And we'll, we never usually mention the colorists, but I am going to name them in this because to me, they were the stars of this book. It was Jason Cardi, I believe, and James Stale. Um, I think those are the two colorists on the book. And just to give everyone an example, because we're talking about the uh, the color and stuff, you saw one image there. But I mean, look at look at that beautiful oh, color. That. So mm. good. Just it's the light as well, isn't it? The shade of the light how they use. It, you are right when you say there's not many diff. There's not a broad palette of colors used. 
but the way that they do use those kind of purples and greens and pinks is pretty awesome when you look at it like that, isn't it? Yes. It's surprising. But... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, this is where my problem is, that the best part of this book is the colour. The colour, the colours are fantastic. There's no question. And like everyone appears in great detail, and it does look very pleasant to the eye. But the fact that that's the best part of the book is really... Is rather disturbing almost. It's like, here he goes. That was the problem we had with Zombie Christmas Carol, wasn't it? Yeah. The but art was the best part. I didn't know what I was reading. It felt like I was reading Daniel Craig playing Sherlock Holmes. That's what yeah. it was. It, it wasn't a screw. <laughs> yeah. It was Daniel Craig playing Sherlock Holmes. And yeah, everything. I think kind of right there. I think that the, was with the use of the words like a game is afoot and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that was said in the book. But even at the start, just, whenever he go ahead. Sorry, Phil, go on. I was just gonna say whenever he was dressed up as that as that, as that old grieving woman, that's a Sherlock Holmes thing. He would dress up to kind of out somebody or get the better hand of somebody else. And it's just, but it's Ebenezer just does know Arthur Conan Doyle, so yeah, he will have read Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Tom's saying he thought the art style was really good and the colours accompanied the story well. Um, I, I think it accompanied well. Um, it was pretty cool, but it definitely, let's just straight away get to that elephant in the room. It definitely gave me Ghostbuster vibes. I got yeah. more Ghostbuster vibes out of this than I did Christmas vibes, if I'm yeah. honest with you. Especially else, in the opera house when that ghost came flying out and then her tongue came out and it was, had all eyes on it. It was very yeah. real Ghostbusters. Yeah, there she is. Yeah. Yeah. That there does look like Slimer a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. A slimer with boobs. Yeah, I first read this and I was all like, "That is just that is slimer." Yeah, but and so what? As well, so what know, if they're taking yeah. reference from That's from right. these other things? They like, even take reference from Pokemon because the little capsules yeah. they catch the ghosts in a Pokeball, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. throw them and, and catch the ghosts. They also <laughs> had like, the big blasters as well. I, I don't recall the big kind of blaster guns. But they were blasting yeah. ice, weren't they? So they weren't yeah. blasting rays of energy. So you've got to give them a little bit of leeway. <laughs> Tom saying did, there's a, yeah. a little bit of Hellblazer in there as well. Yeah, I got a heavy John Constantine. Yeah, a bit of a like, Constantine if this vibe. Would, yeah, if this was a Christmas, a DC Christmas special, that would be Constantine playing Scrooge. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally agree. Good. I think, I think the cover of the first issue gives that kind of vibe as well because he's in there with his brown coat. Yeah. That's like, you know, like when you first showed me that, when I first saw that we were reading this book, I was like, that looks so much like Constantine. Um, yeah, and you do get that vibe. You're right, man. Possible. Maybe that's where they took it from. Then maybe it wasn't Daniel Craig, as Phil was saying there. Maybe it's they that. did kind of go, oh, yeah, we'll give it a Constantine vibe. It's Daniel yeah, Craig. It's 100% Daniel <laughs> Craig. It's adamant. It's like, it's Daniel Craig. I know it's Daniel Craig. I wrote to the author and he told me. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you show that image again where he's, he's wearing the dress, it's Daniel Craig. The dress image. Daniel Craig. Could, watching. Yeah, Daniel Craig could play him in a live action. Let's ask the chat. What do we think, folks? If you're watching this, does does that guy look like Daniel Craig? <sighs> and the other thing as well that I, I find quite disturbing, like Freddy, who's his nephew, looks about yeah. 20 years older than Scrooge. <laughs> Doesn't he? And this I, is, I just say, like, I'll just interject here because this is what I had in my notes and it seems like a good point to, to pop it in there. Um, I found the characters were really not distinct. And I couldn't understand. I've literally underlined it. Why was Scrooge so young? If this takes place after a, a Christmas Carol, why why was he so young and Tiny Tim so old? Like Tiny Tim's grown up, and yet Scrooge is not an old man. And it's, it's not a Christmas end. Carol, by the way. It's not that. <laughs> it's not a Christmas Carol. No. It's it's Ebenezer Scrooge in this alternate universe. He, yes, he has these family members. It's not a Christmas Carol. No, but it is there after a Christmas Carol because he was visited by the ghosts. Yeah, but, but it is explained he's why he why he hasn't aged since then because he's dead. And oh that, yeah, they said something about him dying and res he being resurrected, and he was like, yeah. So that's why well. if his clock's broken, and as long as his pocket watch is broken, he won't age. He's just stuck. Ah, uh, so the new PA yeah, saying the uh, <laughs> the new beer is saying that he looks like Miss Piggy version of Daniel Craig. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah. I I found the, the the characters to be I I I'll be really blunt, right? 
I, I, I found it really hard to give a shit about any of them Ooh. in this book. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. Even like, tiny Tim. Yeah, he wasn't so tiny in this. He's about like seven foot tall. Um, but I just, I just, I really people. wanted to like them because I know we've kind of done a lot of Christmas carol reading over uh, the festive reading that we've been doing. But I just could not get into them. Uh, like Phil said, like the guy was older, and even when they introduced the the authors, when Scrooge was one part in the comic books where he goes to visit the authors to kind of ask them for help. And they're kind of like, no, we don't want anything to do with that. Um, it's almost like he met Dickens there just so Dickens could go, oh, I'm going to write a book on that guy. It just seemed a little bit like shoehorned in there, you know? Um, uh, but Tom here saying he absolutely loved, <laughs> absolutely loved Fanny the Nanny. Fanny the which Nanny. She doesn't ass. like her name and her job title in the same <laughs> sentence. She kicked yeah, ass. She, she was great. You'll be in trouble, Tom, calling her uh, <laughs> Nanny Fanny. You'll be in trouble there, mate. The, the thing I, I struggle with, to be honest, um, it took, it's a five issue miniseries, and it took to the midway of issue four before it actually got interesting in terms of like they were building so much backstory almost. That these were ghost hunters and so, such and such. That wasn't until like there was a bit of a danger where um, the baby Reuben was under threat. Was actually thought that actually is a bit interesting. But it took That's that long in to interesting to me because I'm the other way around. I thought it started off really well, and I got to issue three and I started to disengage. I literally started to think to myself, oh. I really couldn't care less what happens in, in issues kind of four and five. <laughs> I, I just Sorry. thought they, they wanted to get in. I don't know what it was called. The big machine that captures the ghosts and the crystal, the kind of the big steampunky machine thing. Yeah. Like, Isn't it called know. the humbug machine or something? Like called? The humbugger. The humbugger. humbugger. I feel like they yeah. just wanted to get that in. So the whole kind of opera house issue, which lasted the whole issue, pretty much, mm. just seemed like really long, drawn out to try and get this machine and these crystals. And it's just like you could have done it quicker. And then it was only like the, first, the last like. Six eight pages, wasn't it? Yeah, Opera. well, that it feels like it's about 68 <sighs> pages. Yeah, Shame. I agree with Phil. I did feel like it started to drag out, especially when I wasn't really concerned mm. anymore what, what was going to happen. It started to drag a lot. Then, uh, is... the, the newbies just saying the importance of grammar, fanny nanny is all kinds of wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is is I'm wondering if you guys are feeling this because are you having Christmas book fatigue. To be fair, I think I am slightly. Like I didn't yeah. really want to read another Christmas book. If we no, read, I was going to propose to you guys we extend it and carry it on throughout the whole year next year. <laughs> it, it, it's not really a Christmas book, though, is it? Because it's not really set at Christmas. I agree. No, I would. I wouldn't essentially call this a Christmas book. It's got Scrooge in it, so it fits under. You could put it under that umbrella, but as far as it being a Christmas story, I don't really think it kind of is for me. No. It's like the Die Hard of movies, the Die yeah. Hard of comics. Yeah, it's is, it a lot, is it not just, just a, a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Shame, I was back me up, mate. I feel, I feel like I, I I'm, thought I'm this was a silly fun that someone had thought. What's what did what would Scrooge do after a Christmas Carol? He now knows that ghosts exist. He's trying to be a good guy. What's he going to do? He's going to go around and help people with their ghost problems. I thought, how fun is that? And they did it in such a fun, interesting way. It's got a band of humbuggers. You know, they go around, they charge people very little, you know, just enough to barely keep the light, which it, then he's not even charging them enough to keep the lights on. Because Yeah, because what does, what does Scrooge say? He says something, as the purse gets empty, the heart gets full. I like yeah. that. Yeah, and so I did. He, I did like a lot of the witticisms and the, uh, the sassy parts of Scrooge. Yeah, but yeah, it was I few like, and far between. No, but yeah, I did like that he still kept a lot of his personality. I mean, he has no time for people. When he's walking down the street, he just wants them all out of his way. You know, he's still snarky and sarcastic and quite mean. So he's still yeah. keeping his personality, but he's still doing good. So I like that. I like that as a character. So a bit of an anti-hero kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah. So that's I, I, I'll be honest, I liked that part of it too as well, yeah. I did. I, did. I agree with you there, Shane. I did like that element of it. That confused me, though, because he was still Scrooge, as we know him, a, a grumpy, snarky kind of guy. But yet he's trying to save the world, but 
not charging people a lot of money and he's going bankrupt and but he's still overworking Tim wouldn't give him a day off um, Bob Cratchit yeah. couldn't get a day off or uh, uh, I'm not sure Freddie couldn't get the day for his anniversary so he was still yeah. screwed he was still a but bit of an arsehole but, no but that was because he needed him to stop a ghost he told him he can have a day off in four months when they've got a free <laughs> evening four months yeah. Was that a free <laughs> yeah. Four months? oh yeah for his, if that was for his anniversary yeah. wasn't it with yeah. his wife man yeah well yeah uh, just uh tom saying here he's the same as you i think here phil he said he liked issue one and then two. Oh, one and two was a bit meh but three and four he liked so yeah that's kind of what you were saying was it, uh, it, it, i, I it, agree uh, with that to be honest like one one was fun and it kind of gets into the whole vibe of things two i think yeah it was a bit much but then three the end of three is where the kind of story really starts and that's where you know i can't think of the word but yeah that's where it really starts and you know we actually learn where this five issue story is going and for me it was you know that's what like got me hooked like two was a bit of a drag and then yeah i was like next 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 but you know after issues yeah I, I think like phil said it kicks off with reuben the baby doesn't when the ghost is you find out he's coming after the baby yeah. i don't know why i'm doing this with my hand it looks weird <laughs> right <laughs> but when the ghost is coming after the baby that's international sign language for ghost to come after baby. <laughs> um that's really where it all starts uh that's that is the kickoff of this isn't it you know i uh, just want to say hello to tony fett as well for joining us and uh the howdy to uh, to Luke as well, who I can see is uh, in in the chat. Luke Truman, thanks for joining us, mate. Hi, mate. Um, I liked issue one when I um. This is the second time reading this, um. So I wasn't tricked this time, but the first time I thought it was going to be um him debunking spirits and ghosts. Yeah. Because right. obviously the first scene we see is him debunking a clairvoyant. So I thought, oh, how interesting, because he knows ghosts exist now, he can go around and debunk the people that are pretending to talk to them or pretending that they exist. So I, the first time I read it, it's not, I wasn't disappointed, but I was in that mindset of, ah, it's going to be a debunking series. So yeah. when, it, when a real ghost popped up, I was like, okay, we're going this route then, that's fine. <laughs> I thought the same as well, buddy, to be honest. When we read that first issue, I was like, oh, okay, so he's going to be like a... I can't remember that guy's name, but he was a scientist, wasn't he, in the 70s, and he went around debunking all of these kind of, like, psychics and stuff. And I thought it was going to be a bit like that. Um, but what, what I will say is I think uh, weighing this up next to, like, the Marvel zombies, one of the issues we had with that was that we thought the Victorian element didn't quite fit with the language and all that. I thought he did here. I'm not yeah. saying that the writing was great, but their use of the kind of Victorian syntax and the slang and stuff and everything... I thought it was really good. They, they'd clearly um, done their work there, in my yeah. opinion. Especially I, I, when the two streetwalkers walk into the um, police station. <laughs> yeah, that good. scene, that yeah. scene was really good. I think that the for me the best parts of the book was the interaction with the cops and yeah. uh, Scrooge. Like, what kind of was his name? The 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 lead detective or whatever you call him. Can you remember? No? Uh, the chief. Yeah. The big yeah. guy, the boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just quite liked his interactions with him, and and you're right, the the two the two ladies who go into the the cop shop and they're getting felt up by the ghosts, and they're being <laughs> the guy behind the the counter, and that's just I thought it was funny. That that was hilarious. Yeah, there was a bit of cheekiness in this, wasn't there? Um, yeah. At several points, like if you look at the art style when women were falling and their skirts were all around them, like holding them down, so there was a little bit of naughtiness in it, kind of like that. Um, but yeah, I um. I, I think that they did that Victorian thing better. I mean, I I mean, I'm guessing you said that Shane that this company, four five one media, was started by Michael Bay. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I guess this is an American company. And for them to have done their research to know that that the police are called Rosas, like that's that gets a thumbs up for me. You know, that's See, clearly you've done your homework. I thought this too, and then they called nappies a diaper. Oh, I thought they'd done really well. They? To do, yeah, I thought they'd done really oh, well to get kind of English, British kind of words, and then they used diaper, and I was like, I, "Oh, I didn't catch that." Oh, I take really? it back. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed that one. Yeah, because that was always impressing me, and I think maybe that was because I had Marvel zombies in my mind, um, and how bad we thought the use of the narrative was there. Uh, I thought that they did all right with this, but I missed that then, Phil, about the diaper. It's just. Um, and that's another thing too. Um, Freddie's wife, 
Was she deliberately meant to be a bitch? <laughs> she, really, she was a lazy git, and she didn't even bring anything to the story, really, apart from panic when her kid got kidnapped. Or she got possessed. She was the, she was she the main bad guy at the end. <laughs> yeah. This is true. It's like, I've forgotten already. It's, it was that good of a book. <laughs> well, just, what, she goes into the really orphanage like, and nearly kills like a dozen children by setting them on fire. How did you miss that scene? But I can, this, this brings me to a point I had, and I think this is a big one for me. Um, and this is that I got confused a lot reading this. Now, that might be due to my own limited intelligence. That wouldn't surprise me. But uh, I kind of felt like there were missing panels in this at points. I did have it, to go from yeah. one thing to another, and I'm kind of like, did I just miss something there? Like, should yeah. there have been a, something in between? It's like yeah. sometimes I thought I missed a page, like I went a page too far, but yeah. I was like, oh, right, okay. But yeah, it jumped quite a few times. It does jump. Yeah. Wow, I'm surprised you all agree with that. I thought that that might have just been me being a bit, um, a bit dense, you know. <laughs> well, it's either a, co- a problem with the book or we're all dense. <laughs> <laughs> could be evil. <laughs> could go What's either the way. <laughs> Everyone watching, what do you think? Vote now. <laughs> and who's the dentist that was four? Oh God! Yeah. Don't don't come don't, out. In don't order. Come in out. order. <laughs> don't don't don't. don't, don't. <laughs> um, what I, was I going to say? Are we still oh, on the Shane, That's what I was going to say. I was going to ask you, Shane, to, to tell people about the, uh, the little extra stuff you've got with the oh, physical. Yes. Copy. Um, with all 451 Media, because it's going to be like an advert now, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> with all 451 Media books, all their physical copies come with a digicard. <laughs> this is a card that is personalized to every book. Okay, so this was great in 2015 and in 2016 because it worked in 2020 like the rest of the world it does not work <laughs> so, <laughs> what you used to do you used to go to the website 451 media spelt with the um uh, it's spelt four the number four you spell the word five and then the number one dot com for some reason i don't know why they went that route um, and then all you would do is touch this card onto the screen of your iphone when you're on the website, like that, literally, like that, and it would give you a free digital copy, it would give you sketch art, it would give you mm. interviews and behind the scenes stuff, and they've taken was, the function away. Was Daniel I Craig think, one of the interviews? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's a really cool idea, though, man. It, I mean, it was, I know it was maybe really it's a cool. bit dated now, but I still kind of like that that you've got yeah. this yeah. little key card that you can scan and you get. I kind got of one with. Stuff. Because I went mad with 451 Media stuff. I just picked up loads of their stuff because I enjoy self-storage is my all-time favorite horror book. And they do you know what that, as well. Do you know what that would be cool for as well? Like, you know, like Marvel um, have like those various kind of games you can play on, on, you know, on devices. Like, I can't even name some of them. Is one of them called Strike Force or something? Yeah. You know, like if Champions. they... Yeah, they could have those little cards or something with comics for those games or something like as a cool little marketing thing as well you know i think there's still a place for something like that i just have no idea how it works because it is literally just a little thin i don't even know if it, it's not even plastic it's card it, you, as it got uh, like a chip or something inside of it have contactless I, inside it must have yeah it Come must be because we, it was just like magic it was amazing i used to play i just used to play with them all the time get all the different cards out of all my different books to get all the freebies <laughs> and be like how is this doing this is magic burn the witch <laughs> it's like a, a, a Amiibos, isn't it for the nintendo yeah yeah, and stuff. yeah. 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 The, the, uh, another little touch they did wasn't it they had stuff on the youtube channel didn't they like they did like uh like i watched one last night they did Basically, a, 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 a slightly animated version of like the first comic. quarter, the first third of issue one, and yeah. that was really cool. Um, if anyone wanted to put like a voice in their head or something for a character, they can go and watch that, and that's really. I, cool. I will yeah. say, I, I meant to include a link to that in the description for people. So once this finishes, I'll make sure I get that dropped in there. If anyone wants to click on it and uh, go and see a kind of visual representation of Scott saying there of the comic book, yeah, it's you really check good. That out. Yeah, they did um, it for all of them. They did it for we just got, as well. We've got your brother here saying, Strike Force the game. That's advertised on every YouTube video <laughs> ever. <laughs> and and Tom is saying, you're all dense. Oh, so, ah, thanks. Cheers. Just, just the, noobs, the, 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 the noobs are uh, a fan of Strike Force. Very addictive. 
just to follow up on Scott's point about what we put a voice to the character, if you want to do that for Scrooge, just watch any Daniel Craig James Bond movie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let this go, man, can you? <laughs> I can't, I can't see past it, no. He's going to go to sleep tonight. He's going to be like, Daniel Craig. I tell you, it's Daniel Craig. <laughs> I was hearing um, Constantine's voice. Um, what's his name from Legends of Tomorrow? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so I was reading it in that voice. Mm. I kind now, of... thanks to Phil, next time I'm going to hear bloody Daniel Craig. <laughs> I, like, I, I like Daniel Craig, and he, and he was very good in this comic book. <laughs> I, did, I didn't essentially really have a voice for him. I had a kind of gruff, cockney thing going on in my head. I, I can't say it was based on anyone. From, from from what I was reading. Maybe that's where I went wrong. Maybe if I had read this in the voice of Daniel Craig, maybe I would score it a lot higher. I don't know. <laughs> oh, can we talk about the, the main antagonist, which is Jacob, and how he Jacob is Marley. how he is through all yeah. the way throughout the book and how clever that was? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that the whole the whole chain link thing. Like dropping the, the link for each time there was a ghost spot, and I thought, like, I never twigged on until the end. It's like, of course, yeah, it's Jacob cool. Marley. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know, you know why? You know why none of us twigged on there, Phil? Because uh, as Tom said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but it was so it was so interesting when he finally revealed himself to Scrooge, and he to and he told him why. He's like, well, I had a bet with the three spirits that you yeah. were going to carry on being a nasty old go and you were going to be greedy even after you were visited by them and i was meant to come back to life if i won the bet or spend eternity in chains and you went and bloody changed and now i'm stuck like this forever yeah. i thought that was a great motivation and a great character arc for a dead character that we what do we know about jacob marley really from all the christmas carol movies that yeah, he's just, yeah he's dead and he was mean just like scrooge that's all we know about him I what, really I, what I also liked as well is how they kind of I, I, they tried to connect I think many uh, uh, Victorian London points together didn't they like like I said they the Dickens thing was shoehorned in there but the Jack the Ripper thing was quite oh, good yeah, I did enjoy yeah, that yeah, bit. yeah that's mm. good yeah. oh but see that ending made you want another five issues of that story no it didn't <laughs> <laughs> you know who also made a special appearance <laughs> Wells Daniel Just Craig. Normally, let's, let's load it up for for our podcast listeners. Um, DC have hijacked this book because um, can you see it? Okay, who does that look like? Clayface. Oh, Cl Clayface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clayface. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Wasn't he just? Wasn't that monster made out of tea? I thought bit. that. I thought oh, he was what? a tea monster. Yeah, because you see the cop on the floor, and then and when they go the monster. He, yeah, he's holding the cop. So I presumed it was a tea monster. Tea like monster. you, Scott. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. holding the cup though with his little pinky out. That's what's so cute about it. <laughs> Shane, can you can you help me out? Um, I, I, for the whole time, I've struggled to understand one one part of the book. Right, so he. He, obviously, in, at the start of issue two, we see him after he's met up with all the spirits, yeah? And that fourth one, at the end, we learn is him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So he dies, right? But when does he die? Does he die at the end when we see him die? Or does he die at the start when he meets this fourth ghost for the first time? Well, that's not quite clear, is it? Because um, he says in the book that he's been dead two years. Yeah. But so I thought that, oh, maybe A Christmas Carol happened two years ago. But then his nephew, Freddie, says he's been married for two years and he married on Scrooge's birthday. And Scrooge's birthday is not Christmas, as far as I know. Jesus, uh, you guys have done the maths on this one. <laughs> is, is, has Scrooge been a ghost the whole time? Is that what the, the like, not world ghost. moment is? He's not a ghost. He's just... He's, he's a zombie! Pretty much. He's trapped in his body. As long as his clock is... As long as his pocket watch is broken and time doesn't move forward, he's trapped where he is. So why is that stopwatch magic? <laughs> because that because of the fourth spirit that came and visited, I would assume. Because it's also what makes... Um, little tiny tim walk because as soon as that clock is fixed tiny tim drops back again doesn't he? oh yeah his legs stop working yeah 
it goes all gammy again, doesn't it? I feel like, yeah. I feel like the day of hangover now where the numbers just going everywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> but you see, this is why, like I said earlier, I got confused. It felt like this stuff wasn't kind of clear yeah. at the time, it wasn't laid out as, as kind of clear and visible as it should I'm have been. Wondering if, it, if that's the editor's fault. I'm wondering if things have been taken out because if you notice, some of the books are longer than the others like the last one is 37 pages yeah. whereas the first one's only 20 so maybe they were all meant to be 37 ish pages and the editor's gone cut 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 uh, phil Let's would see. have loved the sixth issue i know <laughs> I, I would have liked it if it made sense but <laughs> this is the thing it's a kind of book that it is quite confusing and it probably would reward a second read but i would read it a second time if it was good. So I'm not going to read it a second time, and I'm not going to actually put these pieces together. That's the thing. Like, If you reread it, you might pick things up again. Shane, we have a question here. Shane's the expert here. Amy is asking, so is Scrooge like a Dorian Gray, but instead of a painting, it's a pocket watch? Uh, oh, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. It's kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, it's how they made it out. His pocket watch was broken, He and as soon as Jacob Marley fixed it, and Scrooge just started aging, rapidly and tiny yeah. tim just lost his legs didn't he but he didn't so, he didn't he, didn't he, basically, he basically died didn't he, he was basically bones yeah. and, wasn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. how does how does the watch affect him I don't know. well i <laughs> well yeah see this is yeah it's not clear but you just have to either make up your own mind did the ghost give it to him was it his own pocket watch and it was broken on the night of a christmas carol and so that was his last night, maybe. You know, it's. I think it's up for interpretation. You can decide whatever you want with that. I, I just thought it was all a little bit shonky. Yeah. Uh, where it I'll shouldn't have been that. around important details. Important details, you know, key moments of a story should be very prominent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you're kind of doing a subplot and you need to be more subtle. But like where those things came up, it didn't. It should have been clear to people. Yeah, what was it was very brushed moment. under the rug that he had died. When Freddie was like, "When were you going to tell me you were dead?" and he's like, "Oh, you know, we'll talk about it later." It's like, um, maybe we should spend a page or two <laughs> talking about this now, so the reader knows what's going on. Maybe this yeah. is one of those kind of books where you know, um, you know, like, like, uh, like inception and interstellar and ten like like a christopher nolan type thing where you've got to go back and rewatch things and pick things up and put stuff together your own way maybe not like maybe. not like a daniel craig movie <laughs> definitely not, not like a michael bay movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you want another thing that i don't really understand why they drew it this way if you recall at the orphanage whenever they're they've gathered the children to escape and they're climbing down the window. Yeah. Why are the children wearing bed sheets over their faces? Yes, Phil. Go. The ghost lady. The ghost do it. Yeah. The... Yeah, but take them off when they're climbing down. They, they didn't. It's just like they did. A... No, because they, they used they used the ghost sheets to make the rope to climb down the window. But it was yeah. that transition that you saw the ghost appear. All the kids yeah. are there, and they're all like, oh, yeah. frightened. And then next thing you know, they're turning up to save them, and they're wearing these bed sheets like they're pretending to be ghosts on their head. <laughs> Yeah, I took that as to mock Scrooge. I thought that was mocking him. But it's, there was, that's what I said about it. it seemed like panels were missing. It seemed like there should have been something in the middle there that explained why they'd put all this stuff on them. Like, I just found that very choppy. And for me, that, that was a big knock to this book for me. I'd like to say something positive about the book. Um, I've been now, positive. <laughs> positively negative. <laughs> and, um, and that is how smooth i found the panels like how easy it was like i know you said panels were missing and stuff but you know that's i think this is different like but how easy it was and how much of a good flow it had to go from panel to panel page to page um i enjoyed that um shane's nodding dean's yeah nodding. no i think it was lovely especially there was some really nice um like that one that dean showed with the horse and cart there was some yeah. really nice full pages that had no oh, yeah but they told you exactly what was happening. I don't have any fault with those big splash pages at all, but when Scott's talking about the flow with lots of stuff going on, 
Mm, you know what? I'm going to put my hand up here and I'm going to say maybe it's not the flow that I have an issue. Maybe it's like what I said about it felt like some panels were missing and maybe that was what interrupted that bit as well. So I'll leave it at that. I, Good. I agree that there's that it does feel <laughs> choppy, but is that the writer's fault? Is that the artist's fault or is that the editor's fault to save pages? So you've uh, kind I of got... Really like, four or five one media not being the kind of the big hitter that the the creators would have freedom to do what they want. So the fact that an editor's kind of taking things out or possibly taking things out seems a bit strange for an independent company because you would think this is your baby, you create it, you do what you want. Like who am I to kind of chop and change? Like different from what you see. And it never it never crossed my mind either until you mentioned that shit. Mm, I was kind yeah, of same. pinning this on the, the writer, really. But you are right, it may have been that they went, Oh no, you know what, let's remove that panel, remove that panel. May may have gone that might have taken place after the kind of post creative process. You know Maybe I mean? they were just really, really offensive panels. <laughs> which probably would have saved the book. Wow. <laughs> 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 I kind of agree in a way. All right, look, we're, we're, we're 41 minutes into this, right? So let's do uh, final thoughts and scores because we've got, we got a little bit of stuff to do at the end of this oh, yeah. show, okay. haven't we? Uh, so, you know, so people can pick what the next story is and, you know, you know win something and all that jazz. So... Start um, with Phil so I know what hang I... Hang on, I know where i got to start. i got to start with putting the glasses on. <laughs> glasses that's, that, on. that's how we started. That means that, that everyone knows we mean business when I do that. Sorry, 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 sir. Can um, can you start with Phil, <laughs> so that I know what score I have to give? Ooh. No, that's very true, actually, because you picked a shame. You could go first. Now you point that. <laughs> if you'd have kept quiet, I wouldn't have thought about that. <laughs> no, like I'm going to be completely honest. And then final thoughts and scores for Humbug Four Five One Media from 2015. I think I I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the first time round as well. Um, I enjoyed it a little bit less this time because I think I'm being critical this time. The first time I just got to enjoy it. This time I had to find things to talk about and discuss. And I did notice a lot more the, the gaps in the pages and the story and the jumpy parts and a few of the flaws in logic and stuff like that. So you do notice it when you're deliberately reading things to notice. If you just read it just because you like the cover, like when I picked it up, I just thought it looked interesting. I read it. I enjoyed it. So I'm going to score it on what I read it this time and not what I read it initially because that would have been a lot higher. So I'm going to be completely fair. Gorgeous art. Loved the art. Loved everything about every page. Minus the missing bits, obviously. So for me, to be completely fair and completely honest, this is a 7.5. A 7.5 from <laughs> Mr. Shane. So... It's lower than I would have scored it, Phil, so don't give me that look. <laughs> but I will just say before we, before we continue, if anyone else has read this this week uh, and you want to give it your score, drop your score in the chat and we'll, we'll take your average of what you think. Um, Scott? I enjoyed it. It was a really fun, uh, easy book, I thought. Um, and it, it, it had a really nice, interesting spin on... Ebony's Scrooge, you know, uh, you know, taking his interaction with these ghosts and turning him into like this ghost hunter, pretty much. And I thought that was really fun. Um, colors were were brilliant. Um, I think they did use like big colors to kind of mask the fact that like they didn't need a lot of detail. Um, and they, they, you know, they were just like right, purple, but uh, green, but there, blue, but there, whatever. And but everything that was detailed was detailed brilliantly and the art and the color in especially the color in was brilliant um story wise i feel like it did uh, it did flop it it i i was confused in some bits like that whole bit with the the fourth ghost and is scrooge dead and the clock and tim and all this stuff yeah it wasn't explained um very well but i i did like the little um, you know, the references to Ghostbusters, to Pokemon, and all this kind of stuff. And I like stuff like that. I like it when uh, things get referenced. And um, it was good. Um, I don't think it was Daniel Craig. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, but he was 
dev, uh, devilishly handsome, wasn't he? For uh, yeah. however old, uh, however old man he was. But um, yeah, overall, had a really good time. I would recommend this to anyone um, who wants like a new take, a new spin on the on the Charles Dickens kind of th kind of thing. Um, you know, if if they're not a serious reader, then I think they'll enjoy it. Um, so for me, uh, I'm going to give it um, seven out of ten. It's a seven from our man Scott there. We uh, we do have uh, just addressed in the chat here. Uh, we've got Tom saying it's worth reading. Art style is really nice. The coloring is brilliant. Story is okay. I'm going to give it a seven point five. And uh, Liam. For the first time, hasn't read his book this week. He said, "Unfortunately, I didn't um, read it this week, so I can't produce my own score." However, I am willing to give the same score as the host. You can say Irish wristwatch in the most fewest attempt. Right, we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> Phil, come on! Everyone's dying to know what you think, Phil. Let's go. No, it was not worse than Wacky Raceland. No. Don't even try. You leave him alone, you. You <laughs> let him do his score. Do not try to put him in <laughs> However, I think you'll be surprised at what I actually score it. I thought it looked, it looked lovely. It, 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 it was a good looking book. Colors were fantastic. Um, art was clean and nice, and it wasn't overly groundbreaking, but it was nice to look at. I didn't understand the fact that they tried to put a lot of things in like the jack the ripper thing obviously it's like we nod we kind of but like why include it like why is it there ghostbuster vibes sherlock holmes vibes james bond vibes <laughs> you need to draw on Aston martin to be honest <laughs> so, but strangely what what i'll say about this book i did enjoy it to an extent it's like one of those things when you're flicking through the channels and you've come across a movie and you know it's a crap movie but you watch it from start to finish. Do you know that kind of movie? That's this is the comic equivalent of that, in my opinion. Sounds like any Michael Bay movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I can't score too low because it's not the worst thing I've read. I just didn't like the way like we mentioned like the jumps in the story. Um <laughs> I couldn't see past. It was definitely Daniel Craig playing <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. There's no other way around it. And that's, I think maybe that's where my struggle, because at the very start, that's what I had in my head straight away, and I couldn't get out of that. So I couldn't get into the story. Mm. But anyway, I'm going to score a five. Irish oh. wrist watch. <laughs> <laughs> Irish yeah. wrist watch? Irish wrist right, watch. Well, right then, folks. Uh, I'm going to try and get through mine real quick because I'm just conscious of the time where we've got some more stuff to do. Uh, I will be honest with you. I, I disliked this. Um, I really did. I kind of liked the Ghostbuster vibes, but I kind of felt like, you know what, I could just go and read Ghostbusters and it'd be more cool than this. Um, I didn't get Christmas vibes from it. Uh, I don't think it, it walks a very rubbish line between kind of it being Scrooge and Christmas when it's a paranormal thing at the same time. Uh, I got confused throughout the book um, because I'm dense, as we've worked out. We all are. Uh, yeah, we're mm. all dense. Uh, I didn't give a flying monkeys about the the uh, the characters and stuff. I really disengaged with them. I just didn't find them interesting. And in fact, sometimes I got confused, like who was, his, who was Bob and who was the other guy? And like I just and at about halfway through, I just generally stopped caring. I think, um, along with the missing panels, like I said, to me the only thing that saved this book, the real heroes of this book, were the two colorists. Uh, where it lacked detail in the art and it lacked story, those guys just made the pages shine with their use of lighting and shade of color uh, and the beautiful colors that they chose, the purples and the greens and all of that. That was lovely to look at. Um, so for me, uh, it's going to be a three. Oh. Jeez. Wow. It's a very divided yeah. score this week. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, I'll just say that the chat, we had uh, Tom 7.5, so one score this week. So that gives the a 7.5 for the chat as well. So we scored it. Uh, we had a 7.5, a 7, a 5, and a 3. So that puts uh, Humbug at a 5.6. Oh. 
So it goes just it's, above Secret Wars. It's not oh. what, 0 0.1 point better than no. Secret Wars. <laughs> can I amend my score? Secret. Can I amend my score, please? I, 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 I personally feel that this is worse than Secret Wars, but no, I think yeah. If Phil so, needs to amend his score for Secret Wars, then to get that down a few pegs, because no way. <laughs> so th there we have it, folks. It is one decimal point higher than Secret Wars at, oh at number seven. That will be, won't it? So there we go. At five point six, that is. High I am surprised. I honestly thought we would all have a similar. Like, like you know, six to eight. Yeah, ballpark. shenanigans, shenanigans. I'm I call, I call I'm shenanigans. Shocked. You two have been conspiring together. We yeah. have not. We, there's been no <laughs> shenanigans going on. But um, I kind of, I honestly think it should have been a lot lower for me personally. But <laughs> that's where it falls. That is uh, humbug from Four Five One Media from 2015, which was the five issues in total, I think. Was it five? It was five. Yes. Seemed, seemed a lot longer, but it was five. <laughs> right then, folks, let's get to, uh, you know, what people uh, uh, want to know, and that's what we're reading next week. Um, it'll be the last one of the year, as I said. We're going to mm -hmm. let people decide. So, folks, go for it. Drop your suggestion in the chat. You're only allowed one. One recommendation. If you put more than one, we will take the first one. It has to be under 15 issues, 15 or under, sorry, or if it's a trade paperback, under 200 pages. So go that, put your that, recommendation. That, that does not work. Okay, because 15 issues is more than 200 pages. It, it should be 200 pages in total. Doesn't matter. We've committed to it now. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go, folks. Put them all in. Put them all down in the in the chat, and we'll add them oh. to the spinny wheel. Um, please, people, just put oh. stuff down. Oh, the marked the Greg. Yeah, Greg. the marked. I was Ooh, I, 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 I was introduced. Well, I say introduced. I was I stumbled upon the mark today, so I'm actually I actually hope that comes up. Wow! Look at uh, this. We got some coming. Let's in. let's just see the some of the suggestions we've got. Uh, Saga Volume One from Amy. Uh, Tom uh, is saying uh, Batman Last Night on Earth. That's a good one as well. The marked from Greg. Uh, we've got the White Knight from the Noob. Uh, we've got Secret Wars from Shane's brother. <laughs> Secret Wars he too. To read it three times. <laughs> and we've got Secret Batman, Wars. Creature of the Night. Nice. Uh, a lot of Batman in there. Last chance, folks, to drop a, oh, to drop anything another in one. there. We've got Witches from Witches. Uh, the Retro Cave. Talking to Eminem's team says, "Peck, can we can we take a second peck for this one?" He said he was only joking with Secret Wars. Oh, we did say we'd take the first one. Oh, don't mind you taking. <laughs> if he wants to change it, we'll let him change it. So it's Secret Wars 2 is out. Spider-Man back in black. Ooh, to go in. Sabrina. The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. We've got Ooh, Beth right. with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Nice. It's going to be very good. Yeah. Right, folks. Last couple of seconds to get it in there. I think our man on the spinny wheel, like if you notice, none of us are actually doing anything. We do have a elf who is currently helping us. Uh, he will be doing all of that. All the heavy so, lifting. Yeah, he will. So there we go. I'm excited. I, yeah, I'm, me as well. I think, gonna I think be this will be, it's cool that we'll actually have, uh, you know, the viewers picking something and that's, and that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Oh, and I did not mention as well, when it comes to winning, uh, you know, little gift, uh, we I will send out internationally as well. So don't worry if we've got, American or Australian or wherever you are, don't worry about it. You know, you can. Can you get it there before Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Special delivery. I couldn't even get something to my next door neighbor before Christmas. <laughs> Wait, this thing's going at the minute. That's all, all right. right. Phil, Phil's out Christmas Eve. He can drop it off for you. Can you, Phil? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Took a so second I... there. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Shane, your brother saying if you want to suffer through Secret Wars 2 instead of uh, a half decent Spider Man story, that's on you. And so it's only half decent. He's not recommending a good Spider Man story. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be better than Secret Wars 2. Okay. If you want to read a mediocre Spider Man, then this is the one for you. <laughs> to be fair, I think there's quite a good few choices there. Everything's, yeah. everything's relatively decent. Yeah, yeah. I, I would quite 
like to read um, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. If that wins, I'd be quite happy. I think personally for me, it's between Saga and The Marked. You had to say Saga, though, did you? Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in the next I'm, I'm kind of okay with all of them. I quite yeah. like the yeah. idea of Last Night on Earth and The White Knight. Um I know both of those are great. I've not read Last Night on Earth. I have The White Knight. So I kind of like that. You know, a bit of Batman as well. Can't go wrong. But The Marked, I kind of, I'm excited for The Marked as well. I'm all right with that. I'm okay with most of them, to be honest. In fact, all of them. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't have an issue reading it's anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't. Right, let's get the uh, the spinny wheel in. Let's just see whether we've got Spin. the, uh, whether it's ready there. Hey, Can I get the nod if the wheel is ready, sir? Wheel. Yep. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. The wheel. In. So we got everyone suggest. Let's just count them up. Don't spin it. Yeah, I need to oh. make sure everybody was in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's have a look. See how many we've got. I just want to make sure you that we've got the right. Job. Yeah, I know. I did. Why are you spinning it again? No, no that's, that's the old one. <laughs> Jesus, right. we one thing to do, man. Once we got one, two, three, four, uh, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I what? think that's we got no, nine. How many count? No. Seven on the wheel. We got seven. Yeah, but I'm counting nine in the suggestions here. So oh, we've got, then, but they're not on the wheel. Yep. So Tom needs to put them on. So we've got Saga <laughs> Volume One should go on. We've got Batman Last Night on Earth. Uh, we have the, the marked from Greg. Sag, Saga's on there. Greg's on there. The new yeah. Tottenham Retro Cave. Uh, yep. Bethany this month. So who's missing? Oh, we've got Liam. Liam's uh, missing there. Creature Liam, the Batman night. Creature of the Night needs to go on. So, yeah. Is he listening? Is the elf listening? Yeah, sure <laughs> I'm sure he is. He's worked very hard this year with this elf. If well, not, he's we'll, not, uh, it's not quitting time yet. He's still got another 48 hours. <laughs> if, if not, we'll get him on here and he can face the public. <laughs> so you had seven, so we're missing another one as well, I think. So uh, I think witches. Tom, if you're listening, we need witches added to the list as well from the Retro yeah. Cave. Uh, we need there. the Marked from Greg. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina from, from Beth. That was on the and, uh yeah, and we need uh, do, 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 do. have we got Spider Man back in black as well? From M MJ uh, Comics has just joined. Does he get a choice? No, <laughs> he's, he's, he's too late now. No, of course, he gets a choice if you want. MJ, if you've got a recommended story to read, story arc, throw it in there now, buddy. Make it quick. Yeah, Make it Tom, quick. have you got nine on there now, Tom? This is this is this is great um, content. <laughs> yeah, no. we should have yeah, this one before. job, man. <laughs> one Andrew, job. Yeah. During this time, have you have you had Can time to reconsider your score? Me? We're gonna we're gonna drag him out here in a minute and let him let him let him explain himself. Have we got nine on the list now, buddy? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> He's saying no. Do you know what we forgot? We forgot to mention that Ebenezer sac almost sacrificed himself to save a dog. Against the tar monster. Yeah, that is yeah, very true. <laughs> That's true. I, I that wish good? the tar monster had at the dog. Phil. Yeah. Stop it. I kinda I kinda <laughs> agree now, if I'm honest with you. I'm, I wish the tar monster would have just ate everyone. I just wanted That's something true. to happen. Something something I just needed something to happen. Yeah. Dean, I've just had a count. I think there's only eight, not nine. You got eight. Um, Tom, yeah. have you got eight then? Yeah, I think Liam was the only one missing from the wheel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's got eight then. Okay. okay. Boom. There we go. There right. We go. And the count of three. Un, deux, trois. Go. Spin it. Spin. Let's see what we're reading next week. And not watching. Don't tell me. I'm so nervous. <gasps> Surprise! Oh. Fix. Fix. That's rigged. <laughs> rigged. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Uh. This is brilliant. <laughs> I, I really hope she comes on next week. I'm sure, she will. I'm sure she will. Sure she will. All right. Okay, folks. Just so those listening on the podcast, because we're all making noise and we haven't actually told anyone, uh, we're Sorry, reading. Get... Uh, we're reading Saga, which was uh, Amy's pick. So that'll be volume one. That's what I we're can hear reading. her downstairs. 
I, I think I can tell you now she's absolutely chuffed. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, there you go. So, Amy, if you want to come and join us uh, next week, next Wednesday, and discuss Saga with us, you are more than welcome. Like I said, if you don't want to come on camera, you can just do the voice option as well. And uh, you have won... Um, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> what is currently top of our leaderboard? Oh. You've got first print issues one, two, oh. and three oh. of Harleen. She has our said number she one read. Wow. There you go. It's our number one book, and that, that will fantastic. be winging its way to you over the holidays. As Brilliant. Well. Wow. As a thank you well. from us to you. That's a really congratulations, nice Amy. Congratulations, yeah, well Amy and Scott. <laughs> and again, <laughs> talking of you know the thank yous, thank you all for coming along and uh, and, and joining in and uh, and uh, taking part in this. It's always good fun. It's always great to discuss comics yeah, and discover all this. Even the bad ones I'm noticing are good fun to just talk about. You know, to get together. It's this whole kind of getting together and discovering it all together. You know. So again, thank you all uh, for turning up. And uh, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Obviously, we won't see you now uh, until uh, after Christmas. It'll be the 30th when we do the next one. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, have a great day. I know it's been rubbish. I was saying last week to you all. Uh, so enjoy. I really do wish you have a beautiful day. And 100%. you get to hug your families. And I will say as well, actually, it's just all on me. Like, If anyone is alone at Christmas... And you are part of that where you're locked in and you can't see anyone. Feel free to drop me a message on Instagram, and we'll have a little video call or a Same. chat or something. If you're just if you're stuck and you got no one to talk to or whatever, I am more than happy to have a conversation. All right, then, folks. One last thing to do, and that is to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All to all together, do it properly. One, two, three. Boy.